In this video, we introduce the concept of the mean ionic activity coefficient. This is the first video in a series of two, and the next video is going to show you how to obtain this mean ionic activity coefficient using the Weyl-Hickel theory of electrolytes. All right, so uh, remember that when we're trying to uh, work with agrarian constants uh, and some other expressions, or maybe reaction quotients, Right. Uh, remember that when we have, um, I don't know, a reaction perhaps like A to give B or something of that matter, right? we always write this uh, reaction quotient as the activity of B over the activity of A. Okay, and generally, um, uh, we actually simply map these activities into useful measures of a concentration uh, if the solutions are ideal. Okay, but when you have electrolytes in the solution, so if some of these species are ions, and again, I realize that uh, this should actually be accompanied by some other ions uh, uh, that I'm not going to write right here. Right, the problem with ions, though, is that uh, the conditions for ideality do not apply as readily as for non-electrolytes. And this can be explained very simple by considering how two ions interact uh, as a function of the distance between them. Okay, so we'll write here the potential energy for the interaction of two ions as a function of the separation between them. This R is the distance between the two ions. What we actually find is that uh, this interaction dies off very, very, very slowly, right? So uh, I'm going to only draw the uh, attractive part of the interaction. So I'm going to assume here that this is just a positive ion interacting with a negative ion, but something similar would happen for uh, ions that are uh, equally charged. If this is the, the part of the potential energy where you get to zero, so that means no interaction. What happens here is that the attractive part of this potential reaches that zero very, 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 very slowly. That means that even when you have a distance between two ions that is very, very long, they're still attracting each other. Okay, and is these attractions between ions or repulsions, depending on the uh, uh, charges, right, that really uh, cause a lot of uh, problem. And, and what that means is that you have uh, more ready deviations from ideality. So what that means is that when we come to this expression, now we're trying to map uh, activities into more concentrations or molality and so forth we actually are going to have to make use of activity coefficients, right? So those gamma factors that we have seen in other cases, for example, we can actually have here something like, uh, perhaps uh, I can write here B minus A minus, you will have your, your uh, gamma minus or, or the activity coefficient of that ion multiplied by the moral concentration of B over the moral concentration of B minus at the standard state. And then here you would have uh, the same thing for uh, the other ion, okay? And again, what I'm trying to, to say here is that uh, for non-electrolyte solutions, okay, this interaction actually dies off very, very quickly. Okay, so if you draw the attractive part of the potential, you would actually get to zero very, very quickly. That means that when you put, say, two uh, molecules of methanol in solution, right, and you separate them, uh, there's going to be a point really close in space where they no longer inter interact, okay? Uh, but if these are ions, then you're actually going to have to separate them much, 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 uh, much, much more uh, uh, so that they don't interact anymore. And again, what that means is that you have uh, uh, stronger deviations from ideality in ionic or electrolyte solutions than in non-electrolyte solutions. Okay, and what that means is that these uh, activity coefficients, those gammas, are going to be much more common for electrolyte solutions than non-electrolyte solutions. All right, great. So the question is, uh, how do we begin to think about those um, activity coefficients, those ionic activity coefficients? There's a big problem with ions, and that is that you can never have uh, a solution that is exclusively negatively charged or exclusively positively charged. Right? When you think about ions in solution, or when you think about solutions in general, what happens is that solutions are electrically neutral, right? So, so then uh, doing measurements to determine uh, the activity coefficient for the negative ion uh, 
separate from the activity coefficient of the positive ion, that is going to be impossible because you cannot have, uh, again, solutions that, are, that only contain the negative ion or only contain the positive ion. You're always going to have both uh, uh, in the mix. Right, so the question is, how do we handle that? Well, the, the, uh, the, the way we handle that is by defining something that is called a mean ionic activity coefficient, which is representative of both the positive and the negative ion. Okay, and uh, the way that this activity coefficient is defined is just as a geometric mean of the uh, activity coefficients uh, of the positive and the negative ions. So I'm going to write here a uh, regular salt, sodium carbonate, okay, which has this thick geometry. That's a solid, and when you put it in water, you generate ions, uh, sodium and carbonate. Right, so now uh, these sodium ions or carbonate might be intervening in a, a chemical reaction for which we need to write here a reaction quotient, and what that means is that there's going to be there are terms that depend maybe on sodium, maybe on carbonate, depending on what ion is the one that is at play in that particular chemical reaction, right? So the question is, how do we come up with this uh, activity coefficient for sodium or for carbonate, right? So, so the idea is that you don't define this this uh, ionic coefficients individually for each one of these uh, positive and negative ions. Instead, you define a mean. Uh, ionic activity coefficient, which is simply gamma plus minus. And again, this is going to work for both. It's an approximation, but it's one that we must necessarily uh, take, because again, you can generate a solution of only sodium ions or only carbonate ions. You always need counter ions to balance the charge. Anyways, this uh, mean ionic activity coefficient is the geometric mean of the activity coefficients for the positive and the negative ion multiplied by, or to the power of the stoichiometric coefficients, right? So a, a geometric mean is defined as follows. Uh, that will be the activity coefficient of the um, positive ion multiplied by the activity coefficient of the negative ion, and these are elevated to the powers of the stoichiometric coefficients of those ions, and then uh, this is elevated to the power of one over nu, where nu is just the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients of the ions. Right, so let's do an example so that uh, this is a little bit more clear. For example, if we were to calculate here what would be the mean ionic activity coefficient for sodium carbonate, so Na, uh, Na2CO3, right, uh, that would be the activity coefficient of sodium plus uh, to the uh, power of the stoichiometric coefficient of sodium plus Right, so we look at the dissociation process and we recognize that this nu plus, this uh, uh, stoichiometric coefficient for sodium ion is 2. So that is to the power of 2. And then that is multiplied by the activity coefficient of the other ion, carbonate, to the power of the stoichiometric coefficient of carbonate, which in this case is 1. And then uh, that's one of the, going to be 1 over nu, but nu is 3 because it will be the sum of the stoichiometric coefficient of sodium, which is two, and one, the stoichiometric coefficient of carbonate. Okay, so, so that's how you define this mean uh, ionic activity coefficient, which again, we uh, write as gamma plus minus. Okay, uh, now the, the idea then is that when you calculate this, or when you measure it, uh, as we will see in a future video, right? Now when you, what you do when you come to the equilibrium constant or reaction quotient or any of those, is you no longer write here the specific uh, activi activity coefficient for that ion. Instead, you're going to write the mean ionic activity coefficient. Okay, so that's, that's how uh, this is used for thermodynamic calculations. To wrap up this video, we're actually going to carry out uh, calculations so that you see how this geometric mean actually works. Okay, so this is going to be a thought experiment because it's, it's, uh, we're going to be using data that are, uh, that are made up. Right, so suppose that we actually have that somehow we could measure the activity coefficient of only the sodium ions, which again is impossible to do, but that this is just a thought experiment, and we find that this number is 0 0.78, and somehow we find that the activity coefficient of the carbonate ions would be uh, 0 
right? The question would be what what would be the ionic the mean ionic activity coefficient of the sodium carbonate salt that you have right there. Well, we come to this expression, and then the uh, numbers that are going to fall out of this will be zero point seventy eight squared multiplied by zero point sixty four, and then you have to take that power. And when you uh, do this in your calculator, you find that this number is 0 0.73. So the mean ionic activity coefficient for sodium carbonate under those circumstances will be 0 0.73. And that's what you would use for both the sodium ions and the carbon ions in any thermodynamic calculation that involves the activity of uh, either one of those ions. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to then see uh, how this uh, mean uh, unique activity coefficient is determined from experiment and that is going to be afforded by the Debye-Hickel theory of electrolytes.